Wow, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Chad Arms, aka Chetty Bobby. And my name is Tony, aka Friday the 14th. Oh, a little slight a little, one, a little easy one on that one. Yeah, you just kind of poop good. I had to one. I had to promo I had to wrestling promo last week with uh, last week's episode that favorite our favorite tag teams and stuff. So I came in and just a little a little a little easy on that one. You did, and you did, and and we're here for episode eleven of Over the Top with Chad and Tony, and I myself am Chatty Bobby. We got my boy Friday the Fourteenth over here, and on the hot mic we have the third of this ensemble of this three piece band. What's your name? They call me Hot Mike Chance, and you're tuned in to Hot Mike Chance presents. Over the top with Chad and Tony. Oh, he's just taking it over there. I'm telling you, ever since Chance has got this mic now, we've we, it's just a whole new guy, dude. I mean, this, look at this glow you see around him right here. Hot Y'all mic can't Chance. see it on the on the camera right now, but there's there this mic has just has just given Chance just this aura around him. Yeah, hot mic chance coupled with no sugar chance. Yeah, no added sugar chance is a, is a is a sight to see. I'm gonna go with no fucks given chance right now. Yeah, <laughs> NFG, <laughs> NFG, NSA, the director, MC, I mean, whatever you want to abbreviate him. He's got them all. He's but yeah, building. hot mic chance is here. Yeah, and this this is gonna be a good one. We fun fact, Ding, we were going to do this weeks ago. Yeah, weeks ago. But we said, no, nah, Tony was like, well, the, the new one just came out. You know, let's wait a little bit. So we waited, you know, a month or two. Yeah, give it time to breathe. Yeah, and um, so we're going to talk about the Scream franchise. Yeah, uh, just so you know, spoiler alert ahead, we are going to get into all the spoilers of this franchise. Yeah, so yeah. if you haven't seen these movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, just get the fuck off the channel. Just don't watch. Why are you clicking on this? Yeah, especially when we get to the new Scream movie, Scream 6. We are going to get into plot, plot details and... And the uh, the ghost face and all that stuff. So forewarned, yeah. Spoiler alert. I yeah. So went we'll, completely uh, brain dead right there. We'll uh, we'll go just in in order of how they came out, and then at the end, we will uh, we'll give our our rankings. Yeah. Um, we'll, well I will say this right from the get go. After rewatching these and everything, the screen movies were. I, I thought they it was they were just eh, to me, but after rewatching and going through these. I've grown a bigger appreciation for the Scream franchise, and we'll say, along with a lot of other people, I say they have the probably the most continuous story out of a franchise. Which they don't have as many movies as your Friday Thirteenth and your Halloweens and mm-hmm. um, Texas. Ch- well, don't even get into Texas Chainsaw, but their story continue. The story of all six movies. Flows the best, I guess, is mm-hmm. a, our terms of endearment for it. Terms of endearment. Shout yeah. out to that movie. <laughs> um, I like the fran- I love the first scream. It's one of the best horror movies ever to me. The rest of the franchise to me is, I mean, I we'll get into it, but like, I love the first scream though. No, I'll just say that chance. I know chance. You're a big fan of this franchise. Oh yeah, this is uh, become my favorite franchise with. The addition of the last two. So, really? Yep. That's what sparked it. That's what... Mm-hmm. Chance likes candy corn, guys. Yeah. Yep. Remember that. I mean... But, that, but I get... No, I'm fucking with it. But yeah. that I see why... I can see why it's a lot of people's favorites. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I get I, it I, now. Rewatching them, yeah, I, I, totally I can totally that. understand and get why this is a lot of people's favorite franchises out of them. I mean, it's... I like, think it just gets... To me, as it goes along... It gets so redundant. That mixed with like, oh, it was this person's relative that was this person, such and such. Yeah. And it just kind of, it kind of gets, I'm going to use a big word, guys. You ready? Strap your seatbelts in. Convoluted. Convoluted. Mm. Uh, We'll put the definition of it here. I I think that I used it correctly. Uh, It sounds good. But yeah, the, the best way, I guess, for us to go over is we'll just talk about each one in order. And yeah. give our thoughts, and then maybe some fun facts. And at the end, like I said, we'll, we'll yeah, we'll get this father, well, father, I mean, father mucker going. You had Scream come out in 1996, mm-hmm. uh, directed by Wes Craven, which he wasn't the first choice of to be the director. No, of this Sam Raimi turned it down. Um, George Romero turned it down. The only reason that 
Wes Craven decided to do it was because Drew Barrymore. Yeah, to yeah, that she it. signed on for it and everything, and she yeah. he thought of her as an up and coming big time actress and everything. Yeah, and you were saying too that she was supposed to be the original Sydney Prescott. Yeah, she was at first signed on to be Sydney Prescott, uh, to be the the final girl Sydney and everything, mm-hmm. but. I guess it was some maybe something was shooting and all that stuff, or she didn't want that role. And she decided to be the role of Casey, and of course, Casey gets killed in the opening scene, which she was all over the posters and everything. And you're thinking, oh wow, holy shit, Drew Barrymore's in this, and then boom, first 15 minutes, she's dead, gutted like a fish. Yeah, and and I gotta say too, like I said, I love the first screen. I love how self aware it was. I love that it used. It kind of like broke the fourth wall, uh, meaning like, to, like in a horror movie, you're hearing them talk about other horror movies and yeah. like the tropes of it and and the 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 positives and negatives and the the redundance of stuff that's in horror movies. I thought that was really cool, and, and the the opening scene. Can we? Uh, that opening scene still to me is one of the best opening scenes of a horror movie. Oh yeah. Oh, it's, it's right. nobody thought at the time in 96 cuz there wasn't the internet. Like it was like internet was just around the corner. Yeah. But like nobody expected Drew Barrymore to go down and be gone in the first 15 well, minutes. Well, especially the two two big kills in a matter of like you said the first 15 minutes 15 20 minutes of the movie that her boyfriend is out on the porch mm. and he straight up get, especially in the unrated cut of the movie you, his guts come pretty much Yeah, they they tried to make this an NC17. Yeah, uh, they had yeah, to cut a lot of stuff out. They had to cut quite a bit unrated version later. Yeah. yeah. And if you're good, if you've never seen these, I highly recommend to watch the unrated cuts cuz it's so much more uh so much more better. That's what I was going to say, more better. More shout out to being more better. Um <sighs> We're so, from Nashville. Directed by Wes Craven, obviously, Last House on the Left. Um, he did, uh, of course, Nightmare on Elm Street. He did Deadly Blessing. Wes Craven's done a lot. I mean, he's done a lot. Those are just a few. But the Ward. The Ward. <laughs> that was Carpenter. That was Carpenter. That was way off. Sorry. <laughs> like I said, we're... Samsonite. <laughs> Cut that. I was way off. Way off. I'm Anyways. Leave that in. But you had Kevin Williamson write this one. Yeah, who... who an outstanding television show by the name of Dawson's Creek. Yeah. Guys. This was prior to Dawson's Creek. This was like a year prior. But I'm not ashamed to admit that I thought Dawson's Creek was a dope TV show, man, back in the day. And I think the orig- his original title for the movie was Scary Movie. It was, yeah. Which is uh-huh. crazy because then they ended up making the parody series Scary Movie. Yeah. And I think, uh, which, of course, all these movies are on the under the Weinstein um, Yeah, which, stank, I mean, so. that's got that stank on it. Um, which also, they are, Kevin they, Williamson wrote The Faculty. Yeah, he wrote The Faculty. Uh, yeah. Some other, uh, t- a bunch of t- teenage TV shows. I know The Vampire Diaries. I don't know if you've ever heard of that one. He I, used, my mom Oh, and my sister always would uh, talk P about is that, a yeah. huge. I can't. That's like her number one show now is the Vampire Diaries. But I mean, Ke- Kevin Williamson's track list is stupendous of what he's all all he's wrote and everything. Yeah, and of course, you know, star studded cast. Nev Campbell. She yep. was like twenty two when this came out. Right, right off of what is it? Uh, uh, the Craft. Because the craft was what ninety four ninety four ninety five yeah yeah and then what was the TV show that she was on Seventh uh, Heaven no, no Party uh, of Party five. five Party of Five yeah, yeah. with one yeah. of the wolves yeah uh, Party of Five she yeah. was on there with him Party of Jennifer five. Love Hewitt to the w- yes there, Jennifer Love Hewitt mm. another yeah, screen but, queen yeah yep. yep. but you got Nev Campbell you got David Arquette obviously Deputy Dewey um, Deputy Doofy or Dewey they Dewey. made Doofy <laughs> in the scary movies yeah. that's the WCW World Champion it is it is Ready to Rumble super underrated terrible uh, wrestling movie though it's I a did. fun wrestling it's movie fun. It, 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 yeah yeah and uh, of course Courtney Cox who was like two or three seasons in with Friends yeah she's probably out. She's the big name of the out of the whole cast and everything. Yeah, and yeah, Skeet, other Skeet than Skeet. other than Henry Winkler. Oh Fonz. yeah, Henry Winkler, the father. He was probably yeah. the biggest he, actor out of that because Courtney Cox was just fresh off of Friends. Yeah, she was. They they'd only done a couple of seasons in in ninety six. They yeah. I think they started that in ninety three, ninety four, and then of course she had Matthew Lillard, Skeet Ulrich, um, and it, and you know Jamie Kennedy, Jamie Kennedy. There was a bunch of dope actors, and a lot of them were early on in their career, like especially Neff Campbell was 22 years old, man. Yeah. You know, and um, this movie was just, 
I just think it's it's one of the best. If eventually, I'd like to do top twenty five horror our horror movie. Yeah, movie. yeah, I'm fine. I'm, yeah, That'd you know, I'm down awesome. for that. That it's definitely in that. Like it's one of the best horror movies. It's definitely well, it one brought, of the best of the nineties. Well, it brought back the slasher genre. Yeah, because it, it, we didn't have really any good slashers. Not on a mainstream level. You yeah. had a lot of like. Really low budget, B rated, yeah, slashers. straight to straight to video and all that stuff. But this brought back the whole sli- And what's crazy that they released this, I think, re- a week before Christmas that year. Yeah, which was a weird. Was a weird. So yeah, and that's what's crazy is that. Well, we'll get into. It. We're not all the way into it yet, but like the first Scream movie, I loved the. I loved everything about it, man. It it, it was scary. It had good. It was written well. Like it had good humor in it. Like there was good humor parts and it was it wasn't too much on one side or the other. Um a lot of creativity also. No, for sure. Just, like a lot of creativity yeah. and like the, yeah. the whole vibe of like think about how many people parry like not only obviously the scary movie stuff parried it parodied it, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. like the whole thing with like changing the voice and prank calling, they were talking about how crazy um, the usage of caller ID guy after yeah. this movie. Well, the of concept that. of multiple killers too. Yeah, multiple uh, killers. of, of the, having the multiple ghost faces and working together and everything. Yep. Yeah. But, Red right hand was an awesome song. Oh they, yeah, it you know, became it's been a it, part it, of the whole series. But that was a really cool. The, one. Well, the one, the practical effects are are great. Other than Tatum's kill, you could totally tell in the movie that that was a dummy getting her head smashed in the garage when she gets killed. Rose, McG- what is it? Rose McGowan. Rose McGowan. Yeah, that that's my favorite kill of the movie, though. I thought that movie. Or that, that, was- that one scene when her head gets crushed, you can totally tell that that's that it just. But but that was the um, unrated one, though, right? Yeah, that was on the. I think that yeah, they don't show yeah. that on the on, on the regular because the- it got it had to be cut down and everything. But I mean, and how they found the mask. Is what's spectacular. Did you see how the story yeah, of how they, they found it? Found it like mask? some random house. Yeah, found it yeah. at where they were scouting shooting uh, places to shoot and everything, and the mask was just sitting on a just sitting in a corner or something like that. Yeah, and they they the, the people the the makeup effect people were they had done a few different mock ups of some mask and they were like really over the top trying to be scary and they didn't want to use those because they didn't think it would be like believable. Yeah, or it would have been taken seriously, but. The ghost face is, I mean, it's become iconic. You know. Oh yeah, he's a, it's a horror icon. So, Twenty seven years later. Yeah, whatever. it's he's definitely the ghost faced is an icon in the horror world and everything. Yeah, I love, I love the, you know, I love the who done it aspect of it. Like you really, I ask y'all how when y'all first watched it. Was it easy for? Did y'all know who the? Oh no, was? no, because no. I mean it was ninety six. We were, tw- uh, I was probably. 14 when I first saw it. I didn't see it when it first came out. I probably saw it a few years after Yeah, that's that. what I'm saying. Because in 96, we were 12. So it was probably a couple years after when it first came after I, think I, I saw it. like the VHS or DVD or something. Um, like I probably – I rented it from Blockbuster or the little corner market or something like that. And no, I had no idea that it was going to be Billy and uh, Stu being the yeah. killers. Um, I thought Matthew Lillard was great. And he, he jokes about how – he was like, I can't believe they let me. He said, I just spit my way through the whole movie. <laughs> he said, I was ridiculous in some of those scenes, but they let me just run with it. The buckets of blood in that in the house, which that house, the the third act of that movie is all in one setting. Yeah. In the house and everything. And it's just really, really well done. For that time, it's just freaking uh, really well done. Yeah. And I, I thought Jamie Kennedy was great in it. Like his whole character, I mean, like the – Working at the video store, like super horror movie nerd, like yeah. knows all the ins and outs of everything. I, what I liked not to do character. in a horror movie. Yeah, I thought that was cool. Um, you know, the the ending was was dope. I thought it was a great like twist. I guess you could say. And like, it all become all because Billy. Well, the whole fr- this whole franchise. What is Sydney's mom's name? Maureen. Mm-hmm. Maureen Prescott. Maureen. Yeah. Yep. She was a floozy. She's floozy. She was she a floozy. Was a she, was a, she, she was a she was a whore. She was tossing that thing around to everybody in Woodsboro. Evidently, yeah, Wood, uh, Woodsboro was running a train on. Because uh, the whole reason Prescott. that Billy went on this killing rampage is because Maureen slept with his dad, and that's what made his mom run off. And that's what it's such a weird reason to go on a killing spree. And that's but, what. I mean, and that's why he, him, and him and Stu killed. Maureen a year prior to that. Yeah. And everything they were gonna set it up to be uh 
Sydney's dad. Yep. Which I want to know what Sydney's dad or whether whether well we know Maureen was a struggling actress that was well she must have she must have charged for that thing because they lived in a fancy house right there. Yeah, she, she was charged started, for that. She shit. had an OnlyFans back before yeah, the internet. Before it was, she was. Just, mm-hmm. What, we'll uh, get into more of her escapades later on in this in this ranking. But uh, what uh, what do you think? What do you got to add to uh, Chance? I mean, yeah, I just think that it was you know overall. I think I like the way that all the characters kind of have a certain part that they play, and it all adds up you know to the finale there at the end. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the character that I related to the most was probably Randy. Just because I, you know, being a horror movie fan and yeah. and oh, yeah. and not a psycho killer, so <laughs> but right. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, for sure. And and then like, I love Arquette in this. I think his he's he's basically Barney Fife in yeah. the, like a '90s version. But he does such a great job of playing that role, where he's got some humor, but it's not cringe. It's funny because he's. He does it well enough. I really like the scenes with him and Tatum, his sister, when he's like, She's like clowning him and yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's like, Did, is mom okay with Sydney coming over? Yeah. And he's, yep. he's, he's like a, child. a deputy on the police force. He's like, is mom okay with her coming over? Yeah, he, he's he's good in it. Um, and, of course, you know, that's where you got him and Courtney Cox became yeah. – where they started, I mean, they ended up being married for 12 years. Because I think they, Arquette was supposed to be a different role in the movie. I think he was supposed to be – uh, uh, yeah, he was a different role in the I movie as well. But then was, he but he, uh, he wanted to be changed over to Dewey's character because, of course, I think he's probably one of the older, char- especially in '96, out of that whole group and everything, which made more sense and every and all that. So, I like I like the scene where Jamie Kennedy, Randy, is on the uh, couch watching. Watching Halloween. Halloween, and he's like, "Turn around, turn around." And Ghostface yep. behind him, and then yeah. you know, then you get the kill with the uh, the news guy. What mm-hmm. was his name? I uh, uh, can't remember his. But the oh, when he got his throat slipped. Yep. Kenny, Kenny. Yeah. yeah. That was the. the, the he put on like twenty pounds for that movie because the crazy. script was talking about Gail was making fun of him for being overweight, so he gained twenty pounds to, for that yeah, role. I saw a little, uh, in that same clip. They said where when he gets his throat slashed right there, and everything, the look on his face, they had to cut just because of the look on his face, they had to cut that part out because mm-hmm. he made it feel so realistic. That's so funny. yeah, that that's one of my favorite and kills. Not terrifier, somebody's. Yeah, now you got movies like half. Terrifier, and it's, <laughs> but uh, you have what seven kills in this movie? Seven of them, yep. Poor, uh, probably uh, old Henry Winkler. His uh, his kill was lame, and it he just gets which. I wish we could have seen him hanging from the uh, goalpost, yeah, the flag pole. Yeah, because yeah, they get the phone call. Goalpost, because Randy gets the phone call and everything, yep. which. Ha- which clears the house out. Yeah, cleared the house out and everything. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you, Chan. I wish we could have seen the end result of that kill too, because they get the phone call and they say that he's hanging on the flag post. I think flag post, or goal post, goal or something, post or yep. something like that at the yeah. school. Yeah, I say, I'd say, uh, yeah. That, that overall, though, I mean, clearly, this is one of the the best horror movies ever, um, and this is a classic for sure. The first one. I guess we can move on to Scream Two. Yeah, less than a year, out. less than a year later. Yeah, which they said Kevin Williamson already had the script wrote and prepar- already had a, a sequel wrote for the movie, and it got leaked online, and they yeah. had to rewrite yeah, the script like of, three times. Which uh, that's a common theme it seems to be with this franchise, is which we were getting into the internet era and thing and some yeah somewhat because um, I think Scream Three, well, especially Scream Three too, the script got leaked on it. Yeah. They had to do a bunch of rewrites on it as well. Yeah, but Scream 2, uh, obviously directed by Wes Craven again, written by Kevin Williamson. Um, the script had to be rewritten multiple times because it kept getting leaked. You've got the same cast from the first one. In addition to that, you got a few extras. you got Omar Epps um, is in towards the beginning. And Jada Pinkett uh, Smith. Jada Pinkett Smith. Which is know. another – they kind of went back to the – they kind of uh, throw a uh, – what am I saying – so a retro back, which was only a year prior to getting a Jada Pinkett Smith and Omar Epps at the beginning, and then right from the get go, they're Dunsky. Yeah, they're over with, man. That whole, which man, you got to be a strong uh, that ghost, uh, which comes out. What's his name? Mickey is a killer in the, uh, it's pretty much in this. Spoiler alert to the end of this. So we one. Uh, in this one, you got the same cast as before, but 
You had a few like big actors and actresses. You had Omar Epps. Yeah, Jada Pinkett Smith. Yeah, they didn't have a long. Was it uh, Jada Pinkett at that time, or was it Jada Pinkett? Smith? I don't. That's a good question. Ninety-seven. I don't know if they had gotten married yet in it's their entanglement. Jada Pinkett. She was probably with Tupac at that time. He was passed away in ninety-seven. Okay, yeah. maybe not. she was still with Tupac at that time. He's still alive. Yeah, true. But I thought <laughs> I thought that their those. Omar Epps' kill was dope. Like when he got stabbed through the stall. Yeah, yeah. you got to talk. He, that's a strong motherfucker to yeah. stab somebody through. Oh, for sure. Because if it's a metal stall and that's a sharp ass knife to go through the metal stall door and into somebody's cranium. Yeah, for sure. And then, uh, which they're in the movie theater. They're seeing what is it? Stab two at that time, or is it stab three? No, it's stab two. At that time, it would be the first one, wouldn't it? Is it the, the first, first stab? stab? Okay, maybe. Yeah, it would be the first stab. Because they usually would go behind the movie. Yeah, because Scream so 3 screen well, screen three is based around stab 3. Yep. Uh, so, But anyways, they're, they're, it's at a movie theater. A bunch of people in the movie theater are dressed up as Ghostface. When he goes into the bathroom, there's a couple ghost faces in there. I, never, I didn't get why he picked them to kill. I, what, does anybody know the, the back history of why he picked them two to kill? I don't know if that that one wasn't the one where it follows the original ones, right? That was in Screen Three, where the it follows the original names. Yeah, so I'm not sure why they. Yeah, well, uh, nobody was expecting Omar Epps and Jada Pinkett to be killed in the first 15 minutes of the movie in this one either. Right, it was another one, and then of course this one. Oh, hold on! What about her banshee yell when she gets killed? When she walks yeah, up on was- the stage. And she- ah! Everybody's just like, yeah, she's died. Ah! And she gives out this horrible, it was, it was horrible a, screech. It was a shout out, R.I.P. Screech Powers. Yeah. Um, it was a, um, it was definitely a, a banshee yell. Um, but, again, the surprise factor. Even though they did it in the first one. Yeah. You still, when I saw this one, it didn't even cross my mind that they were going to get killed that early. Even though it happened in the first one. Yeah. With Drew Barrymore's character. But um, this one, they you know, the whole thing with this one is sequels. Yeah. So they play off of that. Yeah, and they grow, they're off to college now. They're at the, with uh, Windsor College. This has one of the cheesiest moments in horror movie history. And not a good cheesy. Yeah. Jerry O'Connell. When Jerry O'Connell's bitch, he's another one that I have on the list of fucking. Oh. What did Jerry O'Connell do? He can't. Do you think, do you like Jerry O'Connell's well, acting? Joe's apartment. What? <laughs> what he in Joe's apartment? I don't know. Do you not remember Joe's apartment? I never watched cock- it. I saw. I remember seeing it was an MTV film. Is that the that's one with the roaches? Jerry yeah. O'Connell. That's what I'm giving you for Jerry O'Connell. Fuck Jerry O'Connell. Okay, here I we said go. it. We said he said he it. can't. Not a we. Fuck Jerry him, O'Connell. dude. You're my Look, buddy. fuck him solely for this where he sings. It is a little ridiculous. It man. is horrible. And Timothy Olin fans dancing. Yeah, is pathetic. Uh, was, was he trying? Horrible. Was he trying to bring out his inner maverick and? Try to. They were trying to kind of, but it, 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 that was cheesy then. But that was the eighties, <laughs> and yeah. they got Tom Cruise got away with it because he's Tom Cruise. Well, yeah, he's, he's not Jerry. Just, he's, Jerry O'Connell's he, not Tom Cruise. But it is yes, I Jerry totally O'Connell agree. is not fucking Gary Coleman. That's true too. I don't even know what that meant, but fuck <laughs> R.I.P. Gary Coleman. Fuck Jerry O'Connell. All right, all right, moving on. But Sorry. anyways, Hot yes, button. that 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 scene right there is ridiculous. And then you have uh, Roseanne's sister is in this movie as well. What's her name in real life? Uh, I don't remember. Roseanne. Uh, you talking about Lori Metcalf? Yeah, Lori Metcalf yeah. is in Aunt this Jackie, one. Jackie, dude. Yeah, Aunt Jackie. I couldn't even. I couldn't think of Roseanne's sister's name, but uh, yeah. So Lori Metcalf, uh, who obviously anybody that's followed this channel knows, Roseanne's one of my favorite TV shows. Yeah, Aunt Jackie. Ever. And she was and Jackie. She was great in it. Towards the end of the show, she turned into like Barney Fife. They made her ridiculous, but she's a great actress. I like her okay in this, even though she's you know obviously not. She's, she's trying to be Gail. She's and, trying to be Gail for sure. Yeah, which Gail has gone on. Uh, she's wrote the book about the the first uh, the first movies incidents and all that. Stuff. Which Dewey wasn't too happy with. Yeah. Well, she wrote a book in the first movie about uh, Mer- uh, Sydney's mom. Correct. Yep. And then she's writing a, in this one. She's writing a book about the Woodsboro murders or whatever, and all that stuff. Um, which her and Dewey, you, you, the the relationships kindling even more than that. Which I think they're real life the married at this time. David yep. Arquette and Courtney Cox. Yeah, two thousand. Yeah, I believe they were. Um, 
Oh, this was not two. This was '97. I don't yeah. know if they're married. They may be. I know that they divorced in 2012. I do know that. Yeah. They separated in 2011, um, around the time of Scream Four, which we'll get into later. But I think that they were, if they weren't married, they were t- like together. Yeah. Oh yeah, they were yeah. most definitely together. Yeah. Which you had <clears throat> you had ten kills in this one total. Yeah, up the kill count a little bit. Um, <sighs> Timothy Olin fan though. What, did y'all? What did y'all think about that reveal? Uh, like I he can, was barely in the movie. Yeah, you know, you got him. It's when he's re- when uh, when Randy is in the uh, theater class and everything, and then uh, a little slow roll by was it Jer- Joshua Jackson in there? Yeah, shout out Joshua Jackson, um, Pacey Witter in yeah. Dawson's Creek. Yeah, written That's by Kevin, Kevin Williamson. Williamson. Bing, it's full circle, and he could beat the fuck out of Jerry O'Connell yes, and out act that motherfucker. <laughs> But yeah, you Joshua. Get, they're they're talking about uh they're talking about the sequels and all that kind of stuff, which yeah. once again Scream talk it, it carries itself it talks about itself in a way and all with all these movies and everything. With its I get what do they call it, the meta universe where, yep. it's, where it's taking itself into consideration and all that jazz. And so but uh yeah, it's a. It's, I think this is a good sequel. It has its cheesy parts. Yes. Yeah, like um, like Billy's mom having plastic surgery and and all that kind of stuff. Like that. Yeah, a after little... she, after she's she's run off and all of a sudden now she's found out that Billy's dead and yep. now she's wants she hires uh, what's his uh Mickey? Yep. Is that the, Mickey to help her kill everybody. So it's just uh. Yeah, the the plot in this one is a little, little crazy. Yeah, and it's, I still, I still have a soft spot for. Yeah, it, it was a little far fetched how she had the, where, uh, what's her name, Nancy? New, it comes out to be Nancy Loomis, where she ends up running away from her kid and her husband because Maureen was throwing that snatch around to everybody, and then she. Thing, thing. A year after finding out Billy gets killed, she wants to go on a revenge tour and hires Mickey to go along with her. Eh, it's this. It's a little far stretched, in my opinion, on that. Very part. similar to uh, the plot in one of the other movies we're going to talk about later on. Yeah, yeah, very, very true. Yeah, um, I like the setting of the third act in in. The theater and all that stuff. The chase. That's one thing about screen movies too. They're always known for the chase scenes. You always got you always got some, uh, Ghostface chasing somebody with a knife, and he is probably one of the clumsiest killers out there oh, in horror. He's, he's the clumsiest. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a couple scenes where Nancy, uh, not Nancy, uh, Sydney kicks him and he he goes flying up through the air from just like a little sidekick from her. She may be that powerful, but you know. Hello. But, yeah, that ending act of Scream 2, I like that where it's set up in the theater. Uh, your boy, uh, Jerry O'Connell, he gets sent off in a in a sucky way. I think his kill was kind of... Deserving. Well, it, I think you could have done better rather than just shoot him in the heart and then send him up into the rafters. Well, he didn't, he didn't deserve a better one because he's Jerry O'Connell. He didn't want to just see him get slit or anything? No, I mean, just get him the fuck out of here. Just yeah. shoot him in the heart, fucking take him away. Fuck him. Poor guy. <laughs> Go, go go make Tom Cats. Isn't that a movie that he did called Tom Cats? We'll put it up on the screen. Yeah, and then you get one of the Fuck the first. Oh, well, I guess what they call. Oh, well, I guess with it being Scream Two, you get a legacy kill in this one because Randy. Yeah, Randy nope. finally gets it. Super. Yeah, like again. That was unexpected. Very me. unexpected. Yeah, well, for a legacy character to get killed in the like early in the second movie. Yeah, during broad daylight. Dude. In yeah. broad daylight, fuck, too, yeah, the, like in the van or something. Yeah, he gets yeah. pulled into the van and butchered in the van because nobody can hear him because what was like skateboarders or fucking <laughs> what was going on? I forgot. Wasn't they were like the, probably listening to Three Eleven walking by or something. Shout like that. Wasn't out that supposed to be Nancy who done that too? Was it? I think she's the one that snatched him in the is, he, is she supposed to be the I killer so. in that scene? Wow. Which he, scream? We'll be getting into that that kind of stuff later. Yeah. Which scream had Creed? What else? That was Scream 3. Okay, well, that we're fixing to get into yeah. that pile of dog. Yeah. Fucking dog yeah. shit. Yeah. Creed, Creed made their appearance in, in Scream 3. Well, what stop, if stop, I curse that movie. We'll say <laughs> it. It wasn't Dream Man. <laughs> but yeah, it, uh, the ending... With with the whole cotton weary thing, I didn't. 
I'm not a big fan of the Cotton Weary character. Is that how you say his name? Cotton Weary? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, once again, another person that Maureen was throwing her snatch around to. Uh, that character is kind of... Eh, what's his name? Leave Schreiber is the actor that plays him. Yeah, who's... Do you think he's blah? Huh? You think he's blah? Yeah, I, I've never really... He doesn't he, never Everything really he's in, I'm like, Leave Schreiber's in this. I'm like, oh, cool. You know what? Eh. Luke Wilson's in it. Yeah, but I'm I'm mean, that how Lee he's Schreiber. jealous. He's jealous of Sydney's, uh, because she's so famous. After yeah, because he's doing. fucking. He, you talking about Cotton Weary? Yeah, yeah. He thinks he's fucking. He, he th- wants to be god dang cock of the walk. Yeah, and all that stuff, fuck, we, you and Jerry O'Connell go fucking off in the sunset together. Which he comes actually to save the day. He shoots Jackie in the fa- in the in the yeah, face. R.I.P. Uh, so, but yeah. The ending it kind of eh, is a little on that one, but it's still it's still up there in the franchise to me. Yeah, yeah, so, it's one of my favorites as well. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah, I mean, what stands out to you the most about it? Um, I just I just like how it was uh, similar a lot, you know, pretty similar to the first. They continued the storyline, although you know it was. Kind of far fetched, like what we talked about, but overall, yeah. I think they they stay true and like to the said, franchise. When they're going into the metaphors of being a, when they're totally talking about sequels in it, it is yep. true to line and, of where everything that they talk about in yep. the movie. And Scream One must have left a good impression on everyone because it done almost as much at the box office as Scream One did. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, and it was cra- and out in less than it was it less than a year mm-hmm. after the first one came out. That's yep. crazy yep. how yep. quickly they. But that comes back to having Kevin Williamson already have the having the movie wrote out and all that stuff. The majority of the movie wrote out. Yeah. Uh, so. Scream Three is a pile of dog shit. Can we talk about it? Oh, we're we're getting right into Scream Three, huh? The year two thousand, directed by Wes Craven, written by Kevin Williamson. Bloody fucking blah. It's a fucking pile of dog shit. It's bad. It, it fucking I, sucks, dude. It's. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that. It it sucks. It's my least favorite of the franchise. That's for sure. Um, Must be something about those part three uh, if horror it's, movie. If it's wor- if it's further down the list than Scream twenty twenty two, then it has to be a pile of dog shit. Yeah, it's 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 down, it's at the bottom of my list for it. I'm I'm not a big fan. They you could tell they totally went Hollywood with this one. Um, with it being based around Stab three. Uh, which I just hate the movie in a movie in a movie in a movie in a movie Inception shit. Yeah, that's I, I do not. All like the acting's it. terrible. The comedy doesn't stick with me. No, with this one. It, there's bro, too much no. comedy in this one for me. It's too Hollywood. It's it's fucking by this by the year two thousand. There's already there's been a hundred different horror movies that's came out that's that scream influenced the original one, but they're better movies than this one. Yeah, the kills are pretty lame in this the, one. They're not good. the kills aren't good. Like it's just there's nothing really memorable about this other, this no, movie other, other than, than it being the, bad. Yeah. yeah, and then it being a movie in a movie. Like the whole the house thing. explosion scene is absolutely terrible. Okay, let me go. Let me see what the end of the scripts is gonna say. Oh, what's that smell? I smell gas. Oh, let me light a lighter when I can smell gas. Yep. And then it's like let's let's they could. Let's explode a hell uh, explode a house for one kill. One kill. You got out of that whole explosion was one mm-hmm. kill. And the girl that's supposed to be playing Gil, I cannot stand her. Yep. Uh, I hate her so bad. The, I don't know what the actress's name I is. I don't care. She's a piece of but shit. But she is I, I cannot stand her. Her voice is not her over yeah. Just, I hate Scream Three. There is one Creed thing. fucking Creed is is the best part of Scream Deputy Three. Doofy De- Deputy Dewey is in <laughs> The Creed What If video, by the way. Really? I have to go back and watch that Fun now. fact. Go ahead, Chance. I'm there, sorry. There is one thing that's different about this screen compared to all the other, There's others. There's one, one yep. ghost face. Yep. That's, a, that's, that's the... Phoned it in. Mm-hmm. They phoned it in. And with it being... What's the, what's the damn... I have it wrote down what the killer's name is. And this, what is uh, Roman. Uh, the Roman Bridger, the director. The director. Like what? And which his is, dad is the producer, which is Lance Hendrickson, and he plays com- like a creepy, like pedophile, like the whole pedophile. He plays movie. Harvey Weinstein. Yes, when Harvey much. Weinstein was back, really doing that in real life. Yeah, he plays. He plays Harvey. And I think it was kind of before, like it, that's a little meaning behind this one. It was kind of 
kind of telling on itself or uh, what telling, kind of it was that definitely was but uh you have once again Maureen throwing that thing around to another guy and throwing out a bastard son which he ends up being the killer he ends up being ghostface which the third act of this one is the best part of the movie you got to give it that the third mm-hmm. act with the whole the ghostface and Sydney and all that stuff that's that's the best part of Scream Three. Well, that's another thing about this movie. Sydney don't do much of nothing in the in the first two thirds of this movie. Yeah, it, well, it's the same with uh, in Scream Four and and Five. She's well, yeah, but like Scream Four, it's like uh, you're bringing in new people. Yeah, you're bringing yeah. in new people with Scream, Scream Four. Scream Three is four years after the first. And can we talk about Courtney Cox's fucking bangs in this in this movie? Uh, Did she I go into it. the bathroom as like uh, with her like two year old daughter and say, hey? Cut my hair for me, little kid. Hey, it was a new millennium. Oh, my and, God. That and is terrible. The haircut on the one chick. Oh, that was the tw- that was Scream 4. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we'll get to that. Yeah. But Can yeah. we pa- yeah, Scream 3 fucking sucks. It's, it's, yeah, it's at the bottom of the list. It's Like I said, the, the third act is the best part of the movie. I, That's because you know it's almost over. Yeah. Well, and, it, and it is clever for Ghostface to bring out a bulletproof vest the first time. Yeah, I mean, where did the... Nobody else thought about that in the first two movies? No, I guess not. Yeah. I guess that's why they were down to one, because the other one got shot. They just started shooting people in two and three. And You were not a fan of Scream 3 at all. I hated it. But Scream 4, 2011. 20, oh, we're moving right along, huh? I mean, we can talk, we can keep talking about Scream Three. I don't. I just don't. What if well, you no, you had ten. I was just gonna say the ten. Ki- you had ten kills in that oh, that's one right. as well. Ten, there was ten kills. Yeah, it sorry. done one sixty one, hundred sixty one million at the box office. Um, what Scream Three did. Yep, and the original cut- two was like right. The first two were at a uh, hundred and seventy four ish. Oh, okay, so it took it took it down. Well, I'm sure that for opening weekend probably. After people were talking about how shitty of a movie it was, I'm not going to say shitty. I'm not going to completely trash on it because every, I will say every movie in this franchise has its likable parts to it and everything. There's not a movie in this franchise that I absolutely despise. Like I do Next Generation Texas Chainsaw and Leatherface like that. Like I can, I can watch all six of these movies, which I'm not going to pull Scream 3 out if I have to. But it's it's watchable. I'll say it that. I think they just set such a high bar with the first two that this one just kind of didn't yeah, live up to the expectations. This is my least favorite one, and I, I, I mean, but it's the it's my second least. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. and then what? Scream Four came out when? Twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. Which you're bringing in? Let's see. Scream Three came out. Uh, two thousand. Two thousand. So you had eleven eleven year gap in between these, which. It takes itself into consideration. Once again, like I said, Scream is always up to times with when its movie comes out. It's whatever's always popping at the time. They, yeah, whatever. Saw four reference in this. Yeah, the kills in this are taking up a notch in yeah. this one because it was when all that stuff was popping with like all the Saw movies, all the Hostel movies, yeah. Eli Roth stuff. Like they call it torture porn or whatever. Is that what you said they call yeah, it? Yeah. Like that super gory, like. I guess they were letting that shit slide, obviously, because um, hostile was a thing. Um, but and same with Saul. But Scream Four I liked better, I've, and then Three. Yeah, um, they turned it up a notch because you had fourteen kills. In yeah, this yeah, one yeah, too. yeah, it's the most which, kills of the franchise. Which actually. the first four kills are kind of well, they're kind of cheap. They're trick kills because they're not. It's like it's part of the stab thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah because the, the, the one kill is. Um, What's your the name chick, for Trick or Treat? Well, no, the chick from Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Oh, yeah. Kristen yeah, Bell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, you have... Uh, I just watched that the other day. That's why I thought of that. And then you have Rose, uh, Peck, uh, the chick from Trick or Treat, the werewolf yeah. uh, scene of Trick or Treat. You have her in there. Yeah. But yeah, like like you said, the first four kills are trick kills and all that, but still they're... They're cool they're, kills, but like, tech, if you want to get technical, there's I guess there's 10. Yeah. In the actual movie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But fourteen that we saw as as viewers, I guess. But I don't know. There's not. This was like middle of the road of all the screams, I guess. Like I like this one better than the third one. I think that eleven years after the third one, still having the team of, uh, you know, Williamson and Wes Craven, which was this was the last time, you know, that they would team together on a scream 
because after you know Wes Craven passed away in 2015. But I enjoyed this one. I thought the kills were dope. I I, I did like the story better than three. Yeah, because it's time to, to kind of bring in other you know, younger people. Well, the one kill that stands uh, when he uh, – the one girl that he kills in the bedroom where he's just – it's it's almost like where Terrifier took a reference from that kill in the bedroom where he yeah. completely destroys that poor girl and then pretty much guts her yeah. and everything too. And now thinking back on it, that's a straight a, a rip from Terrifier too. Had to use that as a reference for yeah. that scene. But it, like I said, it, it takes it up a notch with the gore. Um, is this the scene? This is the one that they do the. Where she's on the phone and she like names off every horror remake. Yeah, he's like, uh, I'm like, why is she doing that? You, you think just because you named Kirby? Kirby yeah, yeah, yeah. Which she makes she makes a return. Yeah, later. Which, yeah, because everybody pretty like, girl, but like that haircut. That was haircut was not a bad choice. Uh, That's Sigourney Weaver. What fucking is it? Hayden Panettiere, I nope. think is what her name is. But yeah, that she going back Jerry and watching O'Connell I, haircut. Yeah, I uh, went, going back. I totally forgot about that haircut choice of her for this Terrible. movie. But uh, going back and watching it was not a good one. But her knowledge of the horror genre was real impressive. Yeah, but that didn't make up for the haircut. That but doesn't matter. No, it's kind of like me. Randy, but not the dork. Yeah, exactly. A high, well, that haircut. Yeah, it takes her down a few pegs. Yeah. Chance, what do you think about part four? Um, I liked it. I I, I really liked uh, the killers in this one. I liked mm-hmm. that Jill, which was uh, Cindy Prescott's cousin. Yeah, like yeah, second yeah. cousin. Or yeah, something. yeah, I like that. Really? And then Charlie. I think you know. I think you that know he was, who Charlie is in real life. Yep, Macaulay Culkin's brother. Yeah, Macaulay Culkin's brother. Yep. Rory Rory R- Culkin. I think Rory it is. Culkin. Yeah. You say that eleven <laughs> yeah. times. No, nah, ain't happening. I can't say it. I can't say it once. But once again, she's jealous of. Sydney being famous because now a hater aid, dude. Because now Sydney is has come out and wrote books about the Woodsboro mm-hmm. murders and all that stuff, and she's jealous of Sydney being so famous. So she wants to become famous too, and pretty much, yep, flip the script and set it up to where she's the lone survivor out of her own Woodsboro murders. She wanted to be the final girl. Yeah, she wanted to yeah. be the final girl, which. Once again, it was scream bringing bringing everything back around. And there was kind of that swerve in that one too, where Charlie was bound up, and then Kirby yeah. Kirby releases him, yeah. and then he gives her the stab. stab. So that stab was a that was a good Sydney. surprise. That was, no, it's that that's when Kirby gets stabbed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're yep. right. And then that's when everybody thinks Kirby's dead right there too. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't. It we find out later on that Kirby's not dead. Yeah, I mean. But and one of the things, Corey, the whole thing with the screen movies, there's always that time where the you, you you know you think they've got the killer and they make that last the little effort. swerve. Not every time, but almost every time, that's yeah. what they do. Um, which you kind of wait for it. You know, it still makes you jump though. So, the, but overall, I I enjoyed this one better than three, clearly. But oh, yeah. I, um, yeah, I mean it was well, it was a, it was a fun one. Scream Scream Three must have left a bad taste in everyone's mouth. Yeah. Because the uh, box office for it was ninety seven point two million, so Ooh. it took a huge cut. That's a huge yep. hit right there. Scream! What was Scream Four? Uh, Scream! That was Scream Four. One hundred or uh, ninety seven. Scream Three was like one sixty one something like that. But then you got to think too. Eleven years later, two thousand eleven, you're starting to get into that time frame where the theaters weren't as because that's when the internet has been yeah. out for. 10 or 12 years and you're getting where people can start bootlegging shit easier and it's not where it's at now yeah. like with streaming stuff and I don't even know if that's all the way what the issue is but maybe that 11 year break from making that shitty one like you said and I say shitty like it's just it's I don't know now was Scream 4 was Scream 4 was it wrote by Kevin Williamson as well yeah okay so that one okay yeah and then do you want to go? You, you want to go to the next one? You got anything you want to tie up on the screen four? Where are we at right now? What does it say? Uh, fifty-four minutes. So we're probably like forty. Forty, yeah, forty, okay. forty-five. We've still, got, we've still got two more, and, and we still got yeah. okay. So we'll jump right into. We can get into this twenty twenty-two. I'll let y'all steer this one. Oh, uh, go right into screen. Well, they call it screen. Just Re- screen. Screen. one of them requels. Yeah, yep. requels. Screen five is what I call it. Screen twenty twenty two. Yeah, 
watching it a second time, I enjoyed it more than I did the first time. The first time, I absolutely hated it. But watching it again, you get a perspective on it from... You can understand why their motives on the killing and becoming the ghost face, why they wanted to, just from... Once again, it gets into the meta, talking about horror movie fandoms going hardcore for their favorite franchises and almost ruining franchises in that way if something doesn't go the way that they like it. They, what's their name? What's the killer's names in this? And, uh, Amber, Amber and, uh, and uh, Richie. Richie. They met on a forum. Um, like a horror, first, a yeah. horror movie forum because their love for the Stab movies and how they hated how it was going so long they was getting away from the original franchise and all this, and they wanted to reignite reignite the franchise in a way. The one thing, I, the Amber girl, I do not like her at all. She's probably my least favorite character. Is that the of sister the, of Ortega? Mm-mm. Uh-uh. No, she's, Am- Amber, was, she's the killer. Yeah, so. she's the girl okay, killer that kills that. Dewey. That makes no sense. That's why mm-hmm. I hate this movie. That One of the reasons I hate this movie. I just don't like woke shit. And this was a woke one, 2022. And it was like the girl, the, having the girl screen, girl ghost face kill the most important character no. of, of, the, of the franchise. Well, that, that and over- Other than Sydney. That and the biggest thing I have with it is overpowering Dewey. That's what I'm saying. It's that girl power shit, yeah. bro. I'm it's, sorry. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It man. doesn't. It doesn't. I hate it. There's no way that that little no, bitty it's thing not believable. I mean, I know take Harvey. over Dewey now, Richie. I can see that. I'm giving a fight. All this shit. All this shit that Dewey's survived in the first four movies. Yes, Dewey's Dewey's been stabbed like six times. Shot. No, yeah. he ain't get, get shot. No, uh, no uh, Gail got yeah. Get, yeah. He has like yeah, his, uh, like one of his nerve damage from one of the stab wounds. Uh, and Ortega's good. She's she's good in it. And this is before she got huge from the Adams family. Wednesday, stuff. yeah. yeah. Um, but she's like four foot eight. Yeah, the Sam. I like I like the Sam character. Uh, Billy's yep bastard uh, bastard just, daughter. Just think, her name is actually if she would have took Billy's last name, Sam Loomis. But in the in the yeah. movie, she's Sam Carpenter, yeah. which is, you yeah. know, kind of a well, and, tribute to John Carpenter. And how did she survive the opening sequence? How did she There's survive? There's a lot that? of things of how did people survive in this movie. Uh, Randy's was it nephew and niece? Mm-hmm. What's I forget what their names are. Uh, especially the one dude that's the quarterback for the football team or whatever. Chad. Chad. How? Fun fact. Mason Gooding. Cuba Gooding Jr.'s son. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Even I, I thought that I think that that's the only thing about these movies. These last two, he's the one thing about these two movies that I think is dope. Like Other I like that, character. That son of a bitch should be dead by the end of these two movies. So yeah, that son of a bitch has survived mm-hmm. more stab because he. How many times did he get stabbed in uh, Scream Five? Probably a fifteen bunch. times. Yep. Okay, and then again in Scream Six, he gets double teamed. That's what she said. Um, <laughs> no. And probably stabbed about forty times, but yet, thumbs up. You're alive. Yeah. When well, and, th- and then see these these next two, uh, you know, we'll it, just mesh them together. They're written by James Vanderbilt and they're directed by Matt Bittinelli and Tyler Gillette. Now these this team, um, the, the the directing team, and there's a, like a producer, like a team of them. It's yeah, the two silent, directors uh, and the producers. What are they call the silent, silent radio or something like that. Yeah, radio they, silence. They did Ready or Not. Which I thought, ready or not, was a fun movie. Yeah, um, they've done a few other things. I, I, I forgot what their credits were, but I know that I know that for sure they did ready or not. Um, but I just, I just, I didn't like this one. I, I like this. This is my least favorite one. Scream twenty twenty two. Yeah, you did not many kills. You only had eight kills in this one. I just, I and then they, of course they do. They've got the whole Randy character is now the chick. That's yeah, like that's superhuman, his, pretty much. That's his, that's, that's his nephew and niece, I yeah. believe. Yeah. Well, and, yeah, and then whenever they go into, there's the scene where they go into Randy's and they got like a painting of Randy. Yeah. And, and the, the chick video. that comes out to give them, she's like, oh, it's suspects. That girl was in Hostel. She's, yeah. the, she's the girl that got killed horribly by the chick that like was hanging in like yeah, okay. horrible kill. She got done so bad in in, in Hostel too. 
Uh, it was a hostile, hostile. One of the hostiles. She she got done dirty. <laughs> in that one. But that's where I remember that girl from. Fun fact, but I uh, just I just the whole lots of blood with the kill. I mean, the, there's lots of blood in this one. I'll give you that. It's it's on the lower end of the ra- of the franchise for me. But for me, it's if you, so it's just some of the stuff is just not believable. Doesn't make the movie. Yeah, I some, can't I can't get, get down with the movie. So the, like I said, the 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 Amber Girl overpowering Dewey, and for Dewey being such a huge character in the franchise to be done like that, it's just. That's what moves. Uh, that's a major factor of why this movie just. It's, a, it's the same thing. It's the same formula that the, the and Halloween I, trilogy just. Did. I want to know, and, and Gail and Gail survives again. Yep. Gail, uh, Gail's going to live through this whole fucking franchise. Spoiler alert for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> she survives that, but Dewey Dewey couldn't survive. Yeah, the, Dewey can't survive, but the female uh, Courtney Ghost Cox Christ. and her stupid ass bangs do. Can we talk about uh, Billy Loomis in this one? And uh, how they shot yeah. his parts in front of a green screen. Yep. See, I, I, that's one part I don't like about it either. I, the whole, oh, I can, yep. the whole ghost Billy thing. Like. It's like she didn't even really, she didn't know her father. or, or She just knows what she's heard about him. So and now how, all of a yep. sudden she can feel it. Now, she did do, well, boy, she went off on Richie at the end of that thing. Mm-hmm. Boy, she made sure Richie wasn't. Richie wasn't popping back up. Well, they did put a bullet in his head anyways. Yep. But I've did, I, that's one thing about this franchise, too. How can people survive so many stab wounds? Sydney's been stabbed probably like a dozen times, at least six or seven times. Gail's been stabbed numerous times. That's the only thing, too, about this franchise with me that I don't – that's why I don't have it. I love the first screen. Yeah. But as far as a franchise, it's not one of my top franchises overall because that's pretty much the only type of kills that you see. Yeah, it stabs. Or a just bunch of stabs. Multi- somebody just getting stabbed the fuck up. There's not there's not like a, a lot of um, creativity in that sense, but it's more realistic, I guess. Yeah. You know, yeah, from a yeah, standpoint. That's what, you, that's, that's what you can get. It's the, the real factor of it because – and, yeah, the intimate factor of somebody's got to be right up on top of you to stab you. So. Yeah, I just I don't ran. This is my least favorite one, but I ran it so much on Scream Three. I don't have a lot left in the tank to run. <laughs> we'll, we'll just move. Right, we'll go ahead, Chance. I'm a big fan of Jenna Ortega in this one. I wasn't as big of a fan as Melissa Barrera, but I think in the next one, I think Melissa Barrera, you know, come around and was a better actress in the second second film one thing she was about in. this franchise too now that you brought that up it makes me think with Jenna Ortega because well, she's in the hospital most of this movie where the fuck are the doctors and the nurses well, the, the, I mean there's a hospital full of people getting killed and had every hospital I've Parkers. ever been to in my life in my life I've never seen a, a wing of a hospital be completely empty yeah well I mean with one person in, in a room and then the rest of the floor be completely empty no. also also Something else I found interesting about this is it seems like they're following with the new ones that are coming out. It's like they're following the old, you know, so in part one, Billy Loomis was the killer. And in this one, uh, Sam's boyfriend is the killer. Yeah. And then we'll talk about the next one, too. That's Yeah, that's a very good point on that one. Yeah, you bring up a real good point with that. The next one, they're in college. Screen two, they're in college. No. I think wow, I, did, that's, yep. I didn't even think about that part of it. That's good job there, Hot Mike. I like Hot you Mike that. Chance, man. So you just might as well just jump right into Scream Six twenty twenty three. Eight kills in twenty twenty two. Yeah. Um, Scream twenty Scream Six, which was a year later, which I'm assuming they filmed them both at the same time, probably. Um, same directing team: Matt Bit- Bitnelli, Tyler Gillette, written by James Vanderbilt. Uh, Set in New York. Tim Ortega. Yeah. Same, uh, pretty much the same cast as the, other than Dewey, yeah. R.I.P. Dewey, R.I.P. Um, no I don't think they Sydney used Prescott. Yeah, no Sydney Prescott yeah. whatsoever mm. in this one, um, which is a downfall. Set in New York, which I don't barely even utilize that. <sighs> yeah, I, I, mean, I the subway. Think, well, I mean, the subway in the bodega or the little the that's which New York's no. I think they should have used Times Square in it. They, uh, yeah, they, just more in New York, or just yeah. don't even say that it's New if, York. If Jason goes to Manhattan, can you use Times Square? Scream Six can. Shout use out, Times Jason Square. goes to Manhattan. Yeah. So I mean, it's just Jason I think they should have used a little bit more of it. Uh, the little alley, 
the Ellie at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I get the, which what's what's her name? That's another big name uh, that gets killed. That oh shit. Uh, what is her name? But she's another yeah. newer big yeah. name actress yeah. that wasn't expecting her to get killed right at the beginning of it. No, well, I mean, once she got the call, I was like, "This she's gonna die," because like this is kind of the par for the course. Yeah, this stuff. Samara right? Weaving. Yeah, Samara, Samara Weaving. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I think she was in that Mayhem movie. And she was in... Um, was she uh, in, like, Steve Ready or Not or one of the... Yeah, was she was in that Ready or Not movie, too, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. she was the... Yeah, yeah. Yep. Which makes sense, because same team, yeah. the directors, yeah. But, uh, and then it goes into, like, the little copycat killers and all that stuff, and then we get into the meat and potatoes of who the... I called this one right from... Mm-hmm. I knew who the killer was halfway through this movie. Very predictable. This one was an easy... To predict, cause especially when Dober Maroney, or Del, the the, yeah. the the dad, which, which ends up being Richie's dad from Scream Five. Yeah, and I knew, like I was up in the I was up in the air, and then when, whenever his daughter allegedly died, yeah, and nobody and he showed get, no give no a fuck remorse. at all. I was like, he's the killer, clearly. and and yep. in. When he uses He's the gun, there. and when he like, uses the gun in the in the market. Yeah, that I knew. Was, I knew from the trailer it had to be someone that was military or a police officer because yeah, of the, the way, way they moved the gun and everything. Mm-hmm. And like, and the big key to me was when his daughter was yep. killed. It's like okay, we're, nobody show and nobody cares. Nobody, yeah, nobody cares. That's how I was like that. They didn't write that well because like. He didn't even fake it or anything. It's like, okay, well, he's clearly part of it. He's one of the killers. Yeah. What but, did What did y'all think about the beginning part where after the uh, the murder in the alley and the the, the supposed copycat, killer, the yeah, copycat killers, yeah, pulled his, I was like, okay, yeah. I I thought we were gonna get to see a killer all the way through the movie for a second. That's what I was. Yeah, I like that. I was I was down with that. I was like, holy shit, this is taking a whole different. Way with it, but then once it changed that quick, it changed mm-hmm. it real quick, and it's just like, man, you had a good idea here to start with, and you should yep, just because we never seen that before. It's always the reveal at the very end. Yeah, and I like, I did like the whole shrine, mm-hmm. ghost face shrine in the yeah. in the warehouse, and all that stuff. That was pretty cool. But it, I mean, it's very predictable of how that one was going to end. The the yeah. the the brother part I didn't see coming. Me either. I didn't I didn't see that part coming, which he deserved every bit of his death he got coming to him. That yeah, just because all through the movie they were calling him, they're saying he was the killer. He was yeah. the killer, which is kind of like Randy calling Billy the, the Billy Loomis the killer in the first one. Yeah, like so you didn't. I mean, you wouldn't really think it would be him. Good call. And then like and I. I didn't think about like the, like you, when you were talking about just a second ago, just the similarities yep. with Scream Six to Scream Two. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nancy Loomis was the killer, Nancy Loomis. and and this this the, time the it was dude, Richie's uh, Richie's yep. dad was the killer, which of course I think this is the first time we get three killers out of the six movies. So watch out, the next one's going to be terrible. Uh, we know we're getting another one, right? <laughs> I think they're already working on the new uh, one, correct? Probably. So, and I just the ending of this one just got, it just got so ridiculous. Bro. It fell flat, and, and then the whole the whole subway scene. I think that when she ended up living, it was kind of bland to use in the subway. I love all the horror characters when mm-hmm. they're in the subway. You see a Pinhead, you see a Jason, you see a Freddy, and they could have used the whole Ghostface thing a little bit better in that scene, and just for her to. To get stabbed. That's the only kill that I could see that was probably the sister, the girl killer. That's the only really kill that I could put. But she was probably killed like all, all the big name people too, according to how they go with Scream 5. But no. Uh, yeah, it's it's middle of the road with this franchise for me. Did y'all miss Nev Campbell in it? Uh, it did. Yeah, I mean, her not being in it, definitely, especially with Dewey, Dewey and her not being in it. Yeah, I mean, like, you get Gail. In that's it, the two best characters. You get stuck with Gail. And I've never liked Gail. Well, you could tell she's had a bunch of plastic surgery. And that's another thing. Courtney Cox, I don't know what, I don't understand mm-hmm. why you went and did all that stuff to your face. You did uh, not look bad. Like, no, no, she's now beautiful. Now she, like, she looks like Caitlyn Jenner now, dude. Yeah, it's bad. Now, is Sydney, do you know if it's. Is Sydney coming back for the new one? I'm, I'm not it's sure. Up in the air. Yep. 
Now it was a contract dispute for this one, wasn't it? They just, they just money. Pay her yep. So. I I didn't really miss her in this one that much. I didn't. I mean, it, it I, was because, like you said, you gotta eventually if you're gonna keep going with this franchise, you gotta you gotta separate yourself. From I mean, them. y'all tell that to Jamie Lee Curtis, dude. Mm-hmm. Well, this is true too. Yep. This, this is, is the and this, that's the thing, bro. These two movies are following that same thing that those the, that Halloween yeah, tri- oh. David Gordon Green dog shit trilogy. Did, Just wait till where it's the women characters are like you cannot do anything to even harm them. Yeah, and they can live. They through survive everything. everything. It's like I get you need a final girl, but you don't need five of them. Yeah, how many how many people survived in this screen right here? Everybody, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's uh, what uh, the dude, uh, the like, Randy's nephew and niece. What yeah. A couple of unimportant Chad people. Got Chad Chad got stabbed more than anybody in this shout, whole franchise. Shout out to Mason Gooding, dude, and he lived. And both lived through both. I'm movies. pulling for Chad in the next one. He's the yeah. only one about uh, it. So I mean, the dude, uh, just follow him wherever you go. He's going to live forever. Coming soon, by the way. <laughs> the album coming soon. Man, what a little so let's on that one. Let's uh, let's just get into the rankings, man. All right, let's do it. You want, you want uh, to just go one by one? Our number ones you, are going to all be the same. Well, let's do this. Let's do worst to first. Worst to first. What's uh, your What's the your least favorite chance? Uh, Scream three. Scream three. Scream three. Scream three. Scream 3. Mine is Scream 2022. Okay. What's your number five? Scream 2022. Scream 2022. So we're just flip-flop. Mine's Scream 3. So our bottom two are the same, just flip. mine's yeah. flip-flop from y'all's. So your number four? Chiz Ants? Uh, Scream 6. Scream 6 for me as well. Scream 6. Very similar. Yeah. Um, and then your number three? Scream 4. I'm with it on that. Yeah, it's the same here. So, our list is the exact same because I'm assuming yeah. your number two is screen, screen two. two. Yeah, screen. Yep. And our screen. So it's like our countdowns are the same, except for mine's. I hated Scream 2022 more than three. So yeah. that's the only thing. I'd like to think that the majority of people probably feel the same about this franchise. I could be wrong. Um, because there's a, everybody's different. You yeah. Know? Oh yeah. But movies like I buttholes. Don't see everybody's there, got one, and they all stink. I don't see how anybody could say Scream '96 is not the best one. Oh God, uh, yeah. There's no way because you wouldn't have any of these other ones without Scream '96. What did you just say? You wouldn't have any of the other ones without Scream '96. Yeah. And you, <laughs> when we did our Texas Chainsaw franchise. Where was the first one? Number two. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying. But that, that, now, I'm, I, 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 now, I did give I did give Texas Chainsaw its respect. You did. I'm the just, last I'm, time that we talked about I, the French. I'm just I'm saying. Just, the movies that I would watch, in, if I had a, if the movies that I would watch in order, if I had a choice, would yep. be these, and I'd watch the remake Texas Chainsaw over the original. I, I understand Any all that. Any day of the fucking week, and I'll I just watch wanted it. to under, I wanted to reiterate. Yeah, I contradicted myself. What so said. what? I contradicted myself. I do it all the fucking time. So be it. <laughs> Jordan's probably laughing right now, going, oh, "I hope he is." Tony, because <laughs> he, he is the one guy that pointed out there in the equ- uh, the Denzel episode where we did our top five. And you didn't. You said you was going to change it, and you said the. Exact I never same changed ones. it. I just moved around the ranking. That's all I did. <laughs> but that's Scream Scream franchise man Episode 11 is in the books baby Good shit I had fun with this one I man. have more respect for it I have uh, more I don't, want, I don't want to say respect I, I think that'd be R.I.P. Rodney Dangerfield But um, I have more appreciation for the franchise After going through and watching it again I needed to rewatch this franchise And I'm glad we did this To, to get me in to watch it again, so because mm-hmm. especially Scream two, three, and four, I need to really. Boy, Scream three was bad. But yeah, I for this franchise, it, it was, just doesn't belong. Nah, it's just mm, it's just too far stretched for me. Which one? Three. Scream three. Oh yeah, it's dog shit. No, I mean, but you know what? We out this motherfucker. Chance, you got anything to say before we leave? Just uh, thank you to all of our sponsors. Nixon Pro Media, Trouble Vodka, and Revolution One Media. Yeah, I, I'm sure. totally jumping the shark on me. On our, on our, 
not only shout out troubled spirits, not just troubled yeah. by just in general. Yeah, exactly. Troubled spirits. Yep. Shout out to Ryan. Shout out to Nixon Pro everybody. Media for Nixon Pro Revolution the One Studio here. Um, shout out to shout out to all the people checking it, uh, checking out the episodes. Also, be sure to follow us on the audio platforms. Um, whether you listen to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcast, um, wherever they're at, we're there. That's us. So y'all be sure to give us a like, give us a rating. That always helps. Um, episode 12, 90s horror. We'll go ahead and tell you now. Coming at you next week. Next week is 90s horror. Y'all be sure to put the comment section, y'all's rankings of the Scream films. What y'all think of the franchise? The good, the bad, the motherfucking ugly. Appreciate you. We love y'all and we out this motherfucker this time. Bow.